Uh, four. I can take this one. Okay. Um, so a pretty big piece of tissue here, and then I can see the fat um, with a lot of inflammation around it. Um, yeah. And then I think just coming into focus, I can begin to see some crystallization. Right. That's uh, the weird thing here. Is at low power, it just looks like fat necrosis with a bunch of mixed inflammation. But then closer, what is this? So the only thing I know that with the crystallization like this is uh, subcutaneous fat necrosis of the newborn. Good. Um, maybe I can't remember if you can see the theorem in neonatorum either. I uh, can't remember. And it, I had looked that up for a recent lecture I had given that had that in there. And um, I think you may be able to have some of this crystals, but my understanding is sclerema ne neonatorum has like less actual necrosis, is more like sclerotic. And really the difference is like clinically, they get these like woody, firm, spreading, indurated areas. And, uh, and obviously the, those babies are sick and, and sometimes do not do well. Um, and it can be fatal. Whereas this is subcutaneous fat necrosis of the newborn, which is like more histiocyte rich, more of these crystals. Clinically, you know, uh, what's the clinical presentation of uh, subcutaneous uh, fat necrosis of the newborn? Uh, term infant, um, maybe a stressful birth or something like that. Um, and I think can present a little bit after the birth as well. Yeah, and then it can be like in the in the kind of fattier, thicker areas. I think you can see it on the the cheeks sometimes. Although if you see on the cheeks in kids, you also can think about cold paniculitis or popsicle paniculitis, which in in young kids can cause kind of some similarities in pattern uh, to this. But I think also, if I recall, in the trunks, like the the trunk, the buttocks, the, you know, in, in babies, there's a lot of fatty areas. But yes, this does uh, mix these nodules that get kind of red or even violaceous. I think it can be bilateral and symmetric sometimes, and then will regress and resolve on its own usually over a period of weeks to months to my recollection uh, again i plan to, to to brush up on this a little bit more and then i woke up late so i apologize guys for for not bringing my a game today um but yeah i think the crystals these kind of these little spike cleft shaped uh cleared out crystalline spaces the idea is that these are what kind of crystals do we think that these are So, are they triglycerides? Yeah, I believe so. They are lipids uh, that crystallize out. And my understanding is that they are thought to be triglycerides or, or fatty acids. And I, I, again, I brushed up on this last time I did a session that had one of these entities in it. And then I'm blanking on the exact which way it is. If it's that my, my recollection is that young babies have a higher concentration of either it's maybe it's a, a saturated uh, long chain fatty acids in their triglycerides. And so it uh, it tends to be easier for it to crystallize out at lower temperatures. And then it makes it makes these kind of spike like uh, crystalline structures. And then during processing, it dissolves and it just leaves behind the kind of ghost outline of where the little uh, lipidized crystals were. Uh, that is my vague recollection. It may be wrong. So go if you're online or you guys do go look it up, read up about it. Make sure that, you know, hold me accountable and uh, we can see if maybe next time I'll remember it uh, correctly. But yeah, the, the point is, is that, that it happens, though, interestingly, in young babies only where you get this pattern, really. And I've, I don't think I've ever really seen this in, in uh, older kids or adults. And And so that's that's the thought is that it's because of the different um, fatty acid content that, that are in baby fat versus older people fat. And I have seen this pattern, though, in a baby in a different situation. And, and I think also in a couple of other cases that people show me pictures of. But one case of mine, and I've got an example of it on, on Kiko. I'll try to remember to put the link down below. But you can go to Kiko and look up angioinvasive fungus. And I have one of the most horrible and dramatic terrible cases of angio invasive fungus I had seen, but it was in a baby and they had like an immune compromised situation and they got a variety of, uh, like it had like, I think if I recall aspergillus and rhizopus, both like both types of fungus invading the vessels, necrosing out the tissue. But in the necrotic fat, this pattern of radial spike like cleared out crystals with that pink frilly background uh, was there in the fat. So even though it wasn't uh, fat subcutaneous paniculitis of the newborn or fat necrosis of the newborn, it was that same pattern of fat necrosis with the spike like radial crystals and clefts. 
Um, so they, they look a little bit similar to cholesterol crystals, but cholesterol crystals are usually bigger than this, and they're more like parallel in stacks, whereas these are more like kind of going out in a radial spokes. But just know that you can also see it in, a, in a, the setting of other types of, of fat necrosis in young babies. But the, this is the textbook example, though, of, of subcutaneous uh, fat necrosis of the newborn. Kind of cool appearance. And yeah, for your testing purposes, remember to look up and learn about scleroma neonatorum. I've never seen a case. My understanding is it's very rare, but it's very bad. And uh, again, from the, the very limited pictures I've seen, microscopically, it doesn't look uh, super exciting to my recollection. Uh, it's more of a, the clinical is really important in deciding that something scleroma neonatorum, which is different than, than this. And here, look, we almost have a little bit of arabesque pattern uh, like you see in uh, lipodermatous sclerosis. So you can see that pattern, that arabesque pattern. This is not exactly like it, but it reminds me of it. You can see similar pattern to arabesque um, or, or membranous lipoatrophy change in other diseases, not just lipodermatous sclerosis. We'll talk about that later.